Hello killers and crafters, I'm Rusty Paul and I wanted to start off by saying thanks to everyone who has watched, liked and commented on my videos so far. We've hit 200 subscribers, I'll try to make sure I bring you more clever Rust based designs and concepts in the future. Woofy TV commented on the stealth based tutorial, can easily be turned into a trap base. Well Woofy, challenge accepted. So here we have my take on the stealth base design turned into a trap base with the help of a cleverly placed ladder hatch and roof. I got this idea from one of Archam's videos, I've left a link to his video in the description. The idea is to leave the ladder hatch open with some strategically placed furnaces on and hope someone jumps in, because once they're in, they won't be able to get back out, leaving you free to attack them however you please. Since my last video, Rust has received a swanky new update which as well as some optimization, has finally added the harbour into the procedural map. So I figured since you want to build a trap base near to where players will pass, why not build it next to the harbour? Ok, so let's get started. Apologies, I'm suffering from man flu at the moment so my voice sounds awful, but damn does that harbour look good. Let's head down to our bush for the stealth entrance, this time I'm going to build it next to some high rocks so players can easily traverse onto the roof. It may take some trial and error here not to build too close to the rocks, you want just enough room so you can get in and out, but tight enough to help conceal the stealth entrance well. So start off with your triangle in the bush, getting it as low as possible into the ground, then your second triangle then your foundation steps and then your five triangle foundations then two square foundations either side and then triangle foundations again and then remove the first one you placed and put a new one on the higher level so you can place your walls once these are placed remove that one again and put it in its original position down at ground level once you've done that, it's good practice just to double check that you've placed your stealth entrance in the right place. If you're placing it like what I am next to the rocks, just double check to make sure that you can definitely get in and out before upgrading stuff to stone. Uh, but once you're happy with that, go ahead and start placing all the walls on the first level here. You can put the doorways in anywhere you want really. You can see I've just picked two random spots here. And once you're happy with that, get rid of the foundation steps and you're going to put a foundation square on the same level as the other ones and then go ahead and upgrade everything to stone. You can probably notice here that the hammer overlays changed to like a red colour instead of the green. I can only assume that has something to do with the, the recent update. Anyway, once you've done all that, you want to go off and wall the interior like how I'm doing here and then upgrade all of that to stone and just make sure it's rotated the correct way with the outside facing out over. Okay, so let's zoom out and see how that looks. Hopefully you should have something similar to this. I'm just going to change the server time as well because it's starting to get a bit dark here and we can't really see what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to jump down and head around the outside and add some foundation steps. Just to where the two doorways are. Might as well upgrade them to stone. Alright, now head inside and start on the roof. So exactly the same layout as the floor, you just want your five triangle foundations, two square, five triangle, and then for the centre we're going to add a floor frame. Go ahead and upgrade all of that to stone. Once you've done that, you're going to add a roof on top of the floor frame. Preferably have it pointing in the same direction as the monument. Don't worry about that left side wall not appearing. Once we go down and add the wall frame, that will appear. Next, add the ladder hatch. You're going to want to have it facing in the same direction I have here so that anyone going down with it open won't be able to access the rest of the base. So drop down and remove those stairs and then head inside through the stealth entrance and here we're going to add a couple of wall frames for the double doors and upgrade them to stone. Next, place your first double door and then spin round and place two furnaces 
in pretty much the same location as I'm showing you here. The reason why you want them here is, once someone's trapped in the ladder hatch, these two furnaces will prevent them from getting onto the ground and therefore prevent them from being able to shoot or defend themselves in any way whatsoever. Next, add a couple of triangle foundations and upgrade them to stone. Then you want to place your chests. This is how I place them, just a couple like this, as far into the corners as you can. It can be a little bit fiddly. That's it. And then place your sleeping bag. Again, can be a bit of a pain in the ass, but we get it there eventually. Now you want to place your second double door. Obviously you'll be putting code locks on them. Head outside and then place your tool cupboard down. I've just picked this spot here. I'm just going to box it into a triangle foundation, but it doesn't really matter where you put it. And that is pretty much it. As you can see here, once a player comes investigating and goes down the ladder hatch, they're pretty helpless. There's no way to get out, they can't even attack you. I sometimes add a campfire into the furnace room just so that it gives off a little bit more light in the distance at night. Obviously guys, this tutorial is just meant as a bit of fun. I recommend that you don't use a trap base as your main base. As you can imagine, people get really salty if they get killed by your trap and will no doubt come back with backup to raid and destroy it. I tend not to make the trap base too obvious like leaving five campfires on outside. The majority of seasoned players will have become wise to trap bases anyway and will avoid it. Stay tuned because the plan is to make a video of this base build on a high population server with my friend Salty Greg, aka Pliskin, aka the Jar Jar Binks of Rust and hopefully we can get some good footage and catch ourselves some nice juicy fishes. And as always guys, thanks for watching, like, comment and subscribe.